At 1201 on October 1st, approximately 50,000 members of the International Longshoremen's Association went on strike. And the strike has affected some major ports along the East Coast and Gulf of Mexico. This is a breakdown of what the strike is about and how it can affect us as American consumers. I'm Legally Hype and this is TSR News. These longshoremen have gone on strike one because they want a pay increase and two because they want protections from automation. Now as far as the pay increase goes, a longshoreman or woman makes about $100,000 a year and what the workers are asking for is a 77% pay increase over a six year period. So now to put this into perspective, currently a dock worker makes about $39 per hour. So over a six year period, that salary would increase to about $69 per hour. But see, the bosses are only offering a 50% increase in salary. And ILA President Harold Daggett is basically saying, nope, that ain't enough, that ain't good enough, go on and pay my people. Daggett has been a part of the ILA since around the 60s. So he's seen the ins and outs of the longshoremen operations. He's been a part of previous negotiations. And he was around the last time the longshoremen had to go on strike for a pay increase. This current strike marks the first dock worker strike in 47 years. And ILA President Harold Daggett made it pretty clear that his workers are determined to get what they owe, or as he put it, we'll just crush them. So what does that mean? Well, Daggett is willing to go to bat for his people because he believes that his workers are not getting paid enough for the work that they're doing and to keep up with the price of living. So for example, during the pandemic, while people were able to quarantine and stay at home or even work from home, it was the longshoremen who were working long hours, putting their lives on the line and getting sick just to try to keep the supply chain going. Meanwhile, they bosses got to stay at home all comfortable and cozy and doing as they please while also making billions and billions of dollars in profit. And Daggett feel like, give us some of that. Like, some of that belong to us. So at this point, Daggett and his people feel like, okay, well, we'll just shut this entire show down since y'all don't want to share. And from what it sounds like, they're willing to sit this thing out as long as they need to to get what they want. In a recent interview, Dagger said what union workers are doing now is going to go down in history. And he made it clear that they can't survive long without the help of the short men. You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. And could today's world, I'll cripple you. So now what does this mean for us as consumers? Well, according to Oxford Economics, if they don't come to an agreement soon, it could cost the US about $4.5 billion to $7.5 billion a week plus inevitable delays on about half of U.S. imports. These delays could also cause price increases. Currently, there are about 15,000 categories of goods that enter through these ports that are not able to get in right now. And that's everything from weave hair, nail supplies, clothes, shoes, banana, coffee, liquor, wood, you name it. As long as these people are on strike, it's not getting through. Now, some of these corporations saw this coming and got prepared ahead of time by ordering a surplus in items. The issue is things like food and produce will not survive long on these containers. New York Governor Kathy Hochul said there are literally 100,000 shipping containers in limbo at the port right now. Now, as far as protection from automation goes, Daggett said, I, I, <coughs> what y'all not about to do is keep using technology to replace workers. And if the government isn't going to do something about it, that's cool. We will. Daggett's whole thing is, look, you can keep it up. We're trying to use technology for everything. But what you're doing is putting people out of work. And without work, these people can't pay their bills. But they also can't pay taxes. And guess who's not going to pay taxes? Machines. Because machines don't pay taxes. And for corporations like Walmart, for example, that gets nearly half of its product through import or Home Depot, Ikea, etc., if they thought they were going to be slick and were going to bypass the strike by bringing products through the port on the West Coast or through Canada, they not. They not. Because according to reports, all of the longshoremen are standing in solidarity. Now, President Biden does have the executive power to invoke a 1947 law called the Taft-Hartley Act which would suspend the strike and give an 80 day cool enough period to give the companies and the union workers time to negotiate their issues. Former President George W. Bush invoked the Taft-Hartley Act in 2002 after 29 West Coast ports locked out members of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union in a standoff. But as of now, Biden said, no, mm -mm. I'm standing with the unions. Y'all need to go on and figure that out. While all this can sound a little scary, like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? The reality is that ports close temporarily all the time. 
Think about during a hurricane, for example. So if this strike only lasts a few days, we'll be all right. But these union workers sound like they in it for the long haul and they're standing on business. 